Occupy Santa Land. Twas the night before Christmas, and you just lost your house. The eviction so served by George W. Mouse. Those stocks that you lost in the Madoff affair, they smoked up the chimney in the last fire there. The children were sold to a Grinch made of newts, who said, little hands make the best handmade suits. And Mama in her hot pants, now working the corner, and I in my pimp hat, paying cops off to warn her, spraying down the street in my last pair of jeans, spotting the limo of the Charlie of Sheens. As the moon cast a glow on my wife's unpaid breasts, his car skidded slowly, like a snow tire test. When what to my LASIK fixed eyes should arise, no, not Charlie's anatomy, but a sled filled with lies. You could call it a sleigh, but the sleigh killed our future, pulled by eight snarky reindeer and a butcher with sutures. The elderly driver was clearly not fit, his license revoked in a DUI snit, as he cut off poor Charlie, I mean his car, in a ditch. He grabbed my wife, shouting, this is my bitch. Now, the wife, seeing red, stretched out her long claws. Listen, fat man, keep your gloves in your paws. I'm a dancer, I'm a dasher, he wheezed out as if dead. I've pranced in great depressions. I've got lobbyist cred. Get away from my vixen. I shout, then I spy, his sled being packed with a haul from Best Buy. I'm a comet, I'm a cupid, ranted Sanity Light. And then with great cheer came a curious fight. As reindeer shat over most of the town square, and Charlie stumbled forward, unzipping his flare, my wife in stilettos and I with middle finger, mug Santa straight up. <laughs> then took off without linger. I glanced back around to see Charlie and eight. He was two and a half men, which leaves five and a half late. So with reindeers aside, and I'm speaking rhetorically, it was hard to determine what it meant metaphorically. A star is a star, and such sightings a rarity, and unspeakable acts are best spoken in parody. I was not too distracted by the holiday fair, as a boot and a dimple were tossed off in the air. Crushed red velvet, pantaloons of polyester. For someone so jolly, he was not much the jester. His cheeks were like roses, as my wife slapped him around, and his nose was as red as that bozo the clown. He was chubby and plump, like a Jenny Craig loser, from the beers he chased back as a bleary-eyed boozer. But drinking while fighting makes for a poor drunk. And his beard, though quite white, came out in one chunk. Now again, I digress from the wag of this tale. I have reindeers as witnesses. I have blame to assail. We've always been honest, hard-working folks. Thought we had pensions. Turned out to be jokes. Republicans, Democrats, an independent or two, all are to blame as the crooks of this do. We've occupied Wall Street, but no longer our homes. We'd be living in tents, save for Bloomberg and gnomes. So don't worry about Santa. He flew away safely, which is more than is said of the FAA lately. Admittedly, his sleigh was light, and not just of his beard. A few flat screens, some stereos, and all those apples geared. The reindeer skipped across the moon, their noses very pleased. They'd sold their ex-celebrity tape and got themselves DMZ'd. Now, we'd never steal from the average Joe, even if he were a plumber. But when you're robbed by your very own bank, well, it begs from dumb to dumber. 
Blame Obama, the credit swap Obama, defaulting the economy dry. Blame UPS, go house arrest. We've nothing left to cry. What of this red ace who takes up black space? What really makes him tick? And how do the 1% believe they really are Saint Nick? Who is this sleigh ride with nothing to hide? I plead the sky most manly. I took your teeth, said Sanity Light, and I work for Morgan Stanley. So, what can be said about a boy in a sled who grows up to be a man in a sleigh? Come to bed, says the wife. It's been a rough night, and you've been so very far away. Have I, he said, as he rolled away into bed, still wearing his red suit and boot. The poor are exhausting, the trouble they're causing. I wish the 99% moot. That's not what I meant, cried his partner's lament. I feel we've grown quite apart. Oh, that, said the Kringle. I'm on Christian Mingle. But it's not an affair of the heart. Yes, that, screamed the missus, her throat filled with hisses, exactly as I had feared. It's not what you think, came that jolly same wink. It's not always about the beard. And after what seemed an endless bad dream came a painfully stretched out pause. Then her words hit the pitch of a dark, unscratched itch. Like the public, you can't fool Mrs. Claus.